Hello, I'm Kangaroo Kenny, a British coach for X10 Star, who are currently competing in the European Blast Rainbow Six Siege circuit, and welcome to my new series of competitive siege analysis videos. I believe that a single Maluti nerf was a catalyst to G2 winning the Six Invitational 2023. They perfected a new meta with the perfect set of players, and I'm going to explain how Maluti's nerf was a big factor in G2's surprise lift of the hammer. I'm going to cover three separate points in this video. Number one, why Malusi was so strong and what impact her nerf had. Secondly, why G2's playstyle fit perfectly with this nerf. And finally, explaining the new meta and why most people misunderstand it. If we look at Malusi's pick rates across the biggest events of 2022, at the Charlotte Major, she had a 43% pick rate and a 10% ban rate. At the Berlin Major, a 41% pick rate, but a 0% ban rate. And at the Yonkping Major, a 42% pick rate and a 4% ban rate. So we can see consistently that Malusi was sat around a 40% pick rate and around a 45% presence inside of the Majors in 2022, which was only lower than the staple meta operators like Azami, Valk, Smoke and Mute. It made her the most pick trap operator in the game by quite some margin. Malusi's three banshees each cover a large radius, which meant that fast attacks, crouch walks and backstabs were very inconsistent tactics for the offense. As a defender, you could place a banshee in a particular area and you wouldn't have to worry about that area because the information that the banshee gives you is 100% certainty that an enemy is close or not close. The knowledge that an area is clear is very good knowledge to have in Siege. This is why Malusi's Banshees are so strong. Now, we come to her nerf. After the Yonkping Major in November 2022, Operation Solar Raid patch notes released. A multiple nerfs, but most notably, Malusi, nerfed from a 3 speed to a 1 speed. Her pick rate then plummeted at the next event after this nerf, Invite 2023. Malusi's pick rate was now down to 17% from a consistent 40% for the majority of the previous 12 months. Players just do not want to play one speeds in Siege. They're slow, clunky, and loud. Although other operators rose in pick rates such as Legion, Capcan, and Frost, none of these traps are as reliable as Banshees. They don't cover the same radius or give them the same concrete information that a Banshee does. And this is how the current meta was born. G2 displayed a method of attacking in Siege at Invite 2023 that was never previously consistent with its main counter, Malusi, sitting at around a 40% pick rate. However, now Malusi was nerfed and not many people wanted to play her, G2 ran with this fast, adaptable gameplay. All the playstyles that Malusi is a hard counter to, fast attacks, crouch walk and backstabs, were what G2 molded their playstyle around. They had one of the fastest entries in the game, Doki. They had one of the best lurkers in the game, Benjamaster. And they had one of the best IGLs in the game, Alamau. The defensive meta at the time was all about being aggressive and forcing gunfights. Defenders would smother one side of the entry of attackers and look to force the opening kill, which is one of the main strengths of Rogue that led them to winning the Berlin Major. I mean, just look at this defense from Rogue. They were doing everything that they possibly could to get a kill outside main door, smothering the two entries from Exet. They got a trade in the end. They were using their yokai drones, double peeking. They wanted the opening kill, and this was the the defensive meta and g2 had a perfect counter to this defensive playstyle. they would create so much what i like to call fake pressure around the map this meant the defenders didn't know which part of the map to smother the entry from if you think of a typical attack most teams will start every player on one side of the map and sweep across to the other side in simple terms they would attack from one side of the map but g2 didn't do this G2 split up and attacked multiple sides of the map. They'd open every door and every window so that they would split the defenders and draw the defenders as far away from each other as possible. And if defenders are split up from each other, this leaves gaps for G2 to exploit. Gaps that 80% of the time are now not covered by any Malusi Banshees. Benja can crouch walk and find those gaps. Alamal can drone and find those gaps for Doki to walk in and take map control or for Doki to find easy 1v1s that he has the gun skill to win. 
Now, the biggest misconception of the current meta is that it is very random, but I want to squash this misconception. Let's take a closer look at the round that was playing in the background here. G2 attacking onto the Kid Storm's bomb site on Oregon. They set themselves up to attack everywhere. They set Alamout on zero outside Big Tower. They set Virtue outside Small Tower as Sledge. They set Benja trying to enter Armory. Then there's Blur outside Main Door, Master Balcony as Habana, and Doki outside White Stairs Window. So the roamers of W7M, the Oryx and the Valkyrie, don't know where the actual push is coming from because there's fake pressure all around the map. There's no telltale signs where the actual pressure is coming from. So defenders have to make guesses and assumptions about what area of the map they should try and contest. Over the small tower side, W7M think that it's a small tower take because there's sledge outside the window and the entry of Doki on Yana is pressuring the shower hallway window and white stairs window. So Oryx calls over Valkyrie to support to smother the entry of small tower side. However, look at the space this creates in the rest of the map. Main lobby, big tower, armory slash garage and that's exactly what benju does gets himself straight into armory and alamal gets himself into big tower taking the space that is free w7m the romers then realize it's actually not a small tower take and it is a master take because ben just got himself into armory and Hibana's is outside the master balcony so then valkyrie rotates through main lobby to try and flank armory stairs oryx pushes into meeting to be able to support from split then on the other side of the map this creates the free space Base for virtue on sledge to take dining side valkyrie then rotates back through kitchen thinking that she's got a kill on benja inside of armory she can just rotate back and hold her position in kitchen oh no virtue's now in dining and kills the valkyrie g2 then set up and executes it's an execute where they keep w7m guessing they are attacking every part of the map so w7m don't know where to put their resources and their manpower they have to individually hold everything and worry about everything so there's the zero in big tower there's the hibana outside master balcony who ends up dropping off and coming up armory stairs and then yana coming up white stairs and virtue down below in kitchen nading vertically into kids dorms w7m don't know they can't predict what g2 are doing a G2 end up executing by pushing four different areas at the same time. Hibana pushes in trophy, kills the trophy player. Zero pushes down attic, kills the pit player of Jaeger. And then Virtue doubles up with Doki on white stairs to trade out and kill the smoke big window. People might think this is very solo from G2. They're attacking completely opposite areas of the map. But if you think about it and look at it, the attic is and master players can trade each other out because of the holes on pit into trophy if uh, the zero dies from the pit player then hibana who walks in trophy and kills the trophy player can trade out the pit player if it's vice versa then if hibana dies to the trophy player zero can trade that out from attic it looks like they're very far apart from each other but g2 are always always focused on a common goal and this common goal is the biggest misconception about the current meta. Yes, the meta is very gunfight heavy at the moment, but that does not mean that the meta is hero plays. And G2 are the best example of how their common goals creates consistency for them, whereas other teams may feel like they don't really play together. They're very spread out. They create a lot of fake pressure, but that fake pressure always culminates to one area of the map and they do actually have a main push. They just make their opponents feel like there isn't a main push and they don't know what to expect. And this is where G2's flexibility, adaptability and fantastic IGLing from Alamau sets them apart. And I'm going to show that in another example. And here is an attack from stage one of EUL 2023, G2 attacking Aviator Games on Villa. With G2 consistently banning away Solace, it allows them to get consistent pre-placed cams around the map. This round, you can see Alama has a drone in library, Virtue has a drone in master, and Blur has a drone study balcony. It allows them to see which areas of the map are easier to take and to focus their main push on. G2 start off the round by applying fake pressure from all areas of the map. 
That's why we see Virtue on Ace on Master Balcony, applying fake pressure. Benja droning himself into laundry to apply fake pressure and lurk an opportunity find. With Zafir study balk, Yana main door, Ying outside art. All these positions force the Virtus Pro defenders to split up, which with Benja down below, he could come up and take the free space up red stairs at any time. And Virtue even opens up the statue wall with a Selma for even more fake pressure. On the face of things, it looks like G2 are extremely spread out and just looking to take solo areas of the map. However, there is a plan behind it all. Benja meets up with Doki at the bottom of main stairs for G2's main push, a main stairs take. Once Virtus Pro actually realise that G2 are doing a main stairs study take, the statue side players of Frost and Valkyrie return to the bomb site. However, this creates the free space yet again on the statue side of the map for Virtue on Ace to take for free. Well, you might be thinking, this is a study side take with a statue side lurker. Wrong. G2 meticulously planned this out. If you think of a normal study main stairs take, every attacker will be pushing from one side, which means the defenders only need to look in one direction. However, with the way that G2 always prod all sides of the map, it consistently allows them to have multi-dimensioned attacks. Defenders now have split attention and have to worry about an 180 degree crossfire between the attacker's push. I hope this has showcased how G2 work together towards a common goal while making their opponents think they're completely unpredictable. And while this is the case because G2 set themselves up to have unlimited possibilities of what they can adapt to in the round, this is what makes them such a strong team. G2 always attack you where your defense is weakest. And now 80% of the time, Malusi Banshees don't cover those weak areas. Whether it be prep phase adaptation or mid round adaptation, G2 are always one step ahead of their opponents. And with some of the best individual players in the world to execute their plan successfully, this is why they won the Six Invitational 2023. Thank you for watching.